Back here at Immaculate Heart Academy in the township of Washington, New Jersey, where the Blue Eagles trail the Maroons of Ridgewood High School 5-2 to two as we are just moments away from opening up the start of the second half. Matt Nelson alongside Brett Luther here with you. And uh, Brett, so far Ridgewood, as you and I had documented at the end of the first half, certainly off to a, a, a great start, especially in a four-minute stretch in, early in the late half. Yeah, it, it's one of those that Ridgewood uh, was turned aside early uh, by IHA and, and really had to find the gaps in the IHA defense. Once they were able to find those gaps, you saw that, that burst of goals there, whether it be through the restarts, uh, you know, just outside the area or through passes, you know, threading, threading the needle, essentially. It was just a, a nice four minute exhibition of, of solid offensive lacrosse and really finding IHA just on their heels, not able to, to really find the, the, the guy, the, the girl that they had to defend there. And so for Ridgewood, that's what they have to continue here in the second half. Darby Kieran, certainly the go-to player for the Maroons of Ridgewood, coming up with two goals in the span of four minutes. Certainly one of the high power you have to contend with if you're IHA. Yeah, it, it, her and Jordan Ford, uh, the two leading scorers on that team. And as we're finding out, the speed of Katie Bork, number 24. It's those three players, really, that the Blue Eagles have got to concentrate on. And, and, and something that if you can negate Bork's speed in some way, shape, or form and prevent the distribution from getting to Ford and getting to Kiernan, that's pr pretty much the way you're going to have to go second half if you're IHA and then counter uh, to get the offense at the other end. Both teams right now taking the field as we are about a minute away from the start of the second half. Ridgewood in their what appears to be black uniforms. Of course, they are the Maroons, so... There should be a touch of maroon red in their uniforms. IHA in their home whites. They will switch sides. IHA moving from left to right. Ridgewood from right to left. Gabriella Vinci will take the face off for the Blue Eagles. And it looks like Ford will do the same for Ridgewood. And Ford has won a few of these uh, face offs uh, in the first half that got the uh, Ridgewood offense uh, going. Ball is up and it's controlled by Ridgewood. Again, moving from right to left. Here's Bork on the run. Trying to get past number 31, Josie Zinn. Kiernan. Here's Maltz up top. Hannah Cermak goes right. Going to go around the cage. Kelly McBrearty from the left side. Spins. Spins again. Finds a teammate. It's Kiernan, but it's knocked away by IHA, and here come the Blue Eagles. Looks like we have a whistle. And it's going to be IHA ball. And key there, Tara Cassidy, number seven, did a good job of defending, keeping the pressure out. Haley Bosalino works it back. Her teammate, Christine Weber, shot scored. Haley Bosalino is 5-3. Ridgewood with 23-47 to go in the second half. Standard give and go there. Bosalino put the pass off into the right corner and they made that cut to the net. It was a sharp cut that created problems for the Ridgewood defense and Matt just put her body in a position to be available for the shot, gathered it one motion into the back of the net. That is a crucial goal here, uh, just a minute 13 into the second half uh, for IHA. Goal number three for Haley Bosalina, and she cuts the deficit to two. A minute 13 into the second half. Looks like Kieran will take the face off again for Ridgewood. Looks like Ford again for, uh, uh, check it. And the ball is controlled by Gabriella Vinci. No, she lost it. And we have a whistle. Ford again, and Ford using her height to her advantage in the faceoff circle. Maggie Zied with possession on the attack. Weber, time for the pinwheel. 
Quinn. Goes left, fires and scores! Just like that, it's a one goal game as IHA trims the deficit to one. Hey, what's a real good play there is, is she got Olivia Rosenfeld's feet tied up. Made a nice little move, shifted the hip a little bit, and Rosenfeld's feet got tied up. And once that happened, it was a sharp cut to the net, moving on across, drag the keeper across with you, and fire it down low. Excellent, excellent attack there uh, off the restart. And now IHA's quickly cut this to a one goal game. Two goals in the span of 35 seconds for the Blue Eagles, and we have ourselves a ball game here in the township of Washington. The Maroons control it. Katie Bork on the run. Kiernan. Biding her time. Shot, it looks like a pass right, deflected by Katie Cromie as we have a whistle with 22.45 to go, second half. And what you saw there, Ridgewood trying to stack it all up on the left side and send somebody cutting across uh, to the right. Uh, but that time the pass just deflected. Uh, unfortunately for IHA, a foul also committed. Looks like Olivia Remley, number 18, has the ball. Good defense by IHA as Remley goes left, now right. Looking for a teammate. Cassidy. And that was splendid defense by Katie Cromie, number 25, uh, making sure that there was no cut to the net by Cermak. Correction, that's Devin Maltz with the ball, not Cassidy. Maltz works it to, I believe that was Smesco. Katie Smesco. Loose ball, who's got it? A whistle with 21.36 to go. It's gonna be Ridgewood ball. Uh, contact down low, everybody trying to go after the grounder and uh, the bump put on. Uh, and that's the thing, Jordan Ford's got such a, such a tall player and, and her height and her length there just really coming into play and off the bump created a foul. And a late whistle. Jordan Ford had the ball. Another foul against IHA. Ridgewood has nine players who are who have committed to Division I schools. We'll talk about them in the late minutes, a little later on, rather, here in the second half. So here's Ford. Trapped. Good defense by IHA. And the ball is going to be in favor of the Blue Eagles. Uh, that was good swarming defense there. Nope, Stan corrected. Ridgewood will keep it. It should be Ford with the ball. Ford. Around. Fires. It's deflected away, and the Blue Eagles come up with it. Good move by Tara Cassidy. Cassidy, long throw. Here's Marmo on the attack. Marmo works her way outside and backs out as she is being toyed around with by Darby Kiernan. Two star players just going at it, competing. Weber. Annie Quinn. As the sun fades out of the windows and the save made by Casey Cole, a very close call for Ridgewood as they come up with a save with 20 minutes to go here in the second half. That was actually a key intervention there. Cole cut off a, a pass, a centering pass out in front. If she had not cut that off, it's a pretty much a slam dunk at a tie game. Cole is just a sophomore. She's got two years left with the Maroons. 
Here's Maltz on the attack. Picked up by Anna Jorgensen, who works her way back up top. Sun peeking back out of the clouds. As Jorgensen will look to reset it with 19 minutes to play here in the second half. Maltz. Works her way, fires a shot, save. By Catherine Healy. And Healy got a chance to see that all the way through and now quickly finds a, a player forward for the counterattack. Zinn to, I believe that was Olivia Nelson. And we have a whistle. This one is gonna go against Ridgewood. So Weber, Christine Weber will look to score. Shot, and it's in. Christine Weber with the goal, and we're, li knocked up, li and we're locked up at five with 18, 13 to go. And that all set up, Bridget McElroy committed to foul in the area there, and, and really just Weber off the restart as we get a timeout here. Weber off the restart, all, all she did was she found the corner she wanted to go for. It, it's like in hockey or soccer, you know, as a shooter, you find that corner you want to go for, you find the spot you want to go for on the keeper, and she went for it and nailed it right off the post and in. Well, Ridgewood got off to a 5-2 start. They've been outscored 3-0 since the start of the second half. And we mentioned that, Ridgewood has nine D1 commits. Just to read off some of these names, a couple of players will be playing at University of Michigan and Katie Smesko and Devin Maltz. So they're headed to the Big Ten Nation in the 2014-15 calendar year. Kelly McBrearty heading to Lehigh, playing in the Patriot League. Darby Kiernan, we've mentioned her name several times throughout this broadcast, heading into Pac-12 territory in the University of Colorado in Boulder. You're just looking at some of the, you know, some of the places that they're going. Uh, you know, uh, Grace Eccles, not not even for lacrosse, but she's going to be attending the uh, University of Pennsylvania. You know, great school there. Um, Katie Bork, we've seen her speed. She's only a sophomore, and she's already uh, committing herself to Dartmouth. Uh, so it's it just, you know, these, these players that you're seeing there just have this ability, and, and also they have the book smarts to be able to get these, you know, be able to go to these colleges. And that's the key is, is both of these schools turn out some tremendous uh, academic work as well as the athletic work. And so these girls have just a, a great, great, career set up ahead of them uh, in lacrosse and beyond. There's actually a player on the IHA softball team, a freshman, name I can't think of right at the moment, but she has already committed herself to UConn and she hadn't even, ha didn't even play a game, which is just remarkable. At the timeout, we're locked up at five and Ridgewood controls it. We have a whistle. I think Ridgewood here, they, they, they called that timeout to settle things down because they were getting beat on the counterattack. They were getting beat in numbers and they wanted to settle things down and find the gaps again in the IHA defense. It's Ford working it back up top to Kiernan. Now it's Maltz. Using her left hand to call a play. Anna Cermak. Kiernan, great double team coverage by IHA. Here's Smesko working it in, and she gets it off and in. Kitty Smesko with the goal, and it's 6-5 Ridgewood. Smesko with a great burst of speed. She found a gap to run through instead of the passing that Ridgewood has done for most of this contest. She found a gap to run through, beat her defender, found a nice angle to shoot on, now it's 6-5. First goal of the second half for the Maroons. 
after the Blue Eagles of IHA laid three goals in the, two of which were a, a, a 35 second span. And now Vinci and Ford will take the face off. Seventeen twenty six to go, second half. The ball is up and it's controlled by IHA. Vinci on the attack, strikes the needle. Works it back out. And here's Josie Zins. We get a whistle with 17 12 to go. And after the communication here, officials still trying to figure out what's going on out there. Looks like it's going to be against Ridgewood as one of the head officials just spoke to Reed Simoncini for the Maroons. Here's IHA, and the shot is high and over the net. And tipped so, good job there by Cole to get a piece of it. Marmo, Haley Bosalina. Annie Quinn, Zinn. Great defense by Ridgewood as they come up with the ball. It's Katie Bork who took the ball away. And Bork again, not only with her speed, but she's defended well here this afternoon. Bork with an open field as Zinn comes in from behind. Bork backs out. McBreardy. On the far side, gets it to Semesco, and Semesco puts it in. Seven to five, Ridgewood. Semesco with back-to-back -back goals with 15.41 to go. And again, Semesco there, she finds that gap. It is, this is what was happening in the first gap in, in the first half. They were finding the gaps on the back side of the play. And Semesco, she sees the, the lane to go run through. Catches her defender napping just a little bit, enough that she's got body position. The pass comes in, and from there, slam dunk. And now Katie Semesco with her 15th goal of the season. She had one already today. Which, which was about two minutes ago as my headset happened to fall off my head. Oh, Something you don't see every day oh. from a broadcaster. Technical difficulty right there. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like a circle violation there. Once again, it's going to be Vinci and Ford to battle for the faceoff. They're going to call it jump ball. And this this favors Ford because of her height. Mm -hmm. Looks like she's got about an inch or so on Vinci. So the two will battle forward here with the jump ball. It's controlled by Vinci. Vinci on the attack. Good move to the left side. Vinci did a good job there of just taking that ball away off the jump. And it's intercepted by Kiernan. Here come the Maroons. That's Maltz. Maltz with a strong move. Works it back out, shot and scored. Bridget McElroy with the goal, and it's eight to five Maroons. Actually, I think that might have been Hannah Cermak cutting through. Yeah, in fact, it, it was. Yeah, it was Cermak cutting through. Number eighteen, and, and just and the thing, you know, timeout now, of course, on the other, on uh, IHA side. And, and a great, just excellent vision there to find that pass coming through. And, and, and uh, Cermak makes herself available right at the top of the, uh, of the, uh, the crease. 
and just it's boom, one motion in the net, and Ridgewood three unanswered goals now to go right back up 8-5. IHA started the second half off with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back goals. Ridgewood fired off three goals right after that. Semesco and Cermak with two goals in the span of 30 seconds, and all of a sudden, Ridgewood's start to pull away again. Yeah, it, it's, it's, we've, after having that first 15 minutes of virtually no scoring, all of a sudden, it's been an explosion here because now both teams have found that the, the, the gaps in the defense. We can see that Ridgewood is susceptible to the counterattack. We can see setting up in the offensive zone that the Maroons are finding the spaces in, in the defense of IHA. And so that's pretty much the key here. IHA needs to push the pace. They need to get the counterattack going quickly. And Ridgewood, just set things up. Look for your spaces. Look for your open areas. That's the way both teams have got to attack here and subsequently have to know how to defend at the other end. 15-11 to go here in this game. A game that was pretty much controlled by Ridgewood throughout the first half. IHA tied it up with Christine Weber's goal, which locked it up at five with 18-13 to go. And over the last three minutes, Ridgewood has pulled away. Back-to-back -back goals from Katie Semesco, the soon-to-be Michigan Wolverine. And then Hannah Cermak with a goal just moments ago, making it 8-5. And what you've seen here is spurts after IHA got that first one. Ridgewood scored five in a row. Then IHA ended the first half and into the second half scored four in a row. Now Ridgewood's got the last three. It's been spurts back and forth. And now let's see off the timeout if IHA could put on a run of their own and bring the score closer to level. Jordan Ford for Ridgewood and Gabriella Vinci for IHA once again taking the face off. At this point in the first half, it was one nothing IHA. And we've seen six goals in the first 10 minutes here in the second half. Ball is up and we got a loose ball. They're volleying for it and it's picked up by Ridgewood. And we do we have another goal? Yeah, yes, we, have. we do. Not sure who scored, but now it's 9-5 Ridgewood with 14.57 to play. Kiernan got that one. Yeah, as she just raced forward with the loose ball and just, again, found a spot. Not much Healy can do. Pretty much odd man rush going the other way. You have to respect any of the options going through. Kiernan finds herself a spot, zips it right home. So that's a hat trick for Dar Darby Kiernan. She has 42 goals on the season. A force to be reckoned with. Kiernan soon to be headed to the University of Colorado in Boulder. And the ball will be controlled by IHA. Maggie Z comes up with it. Here's Jen Mistretta, haven't talked much about her. Shot attempt and a good save by Casey Cole. Couldn't tell who had the shot attempt for IHA as the ball goes out of bounds. And IHA comes up with it, 14 and a half to go. Casey Cole got that stick down in time, knocked it away to the corner. Zinn. Bosalina goes back to Zinn. And now to Vinci on the far side. Vinci working it around. They go behind the net. Weber to Zinn. Marmo up top. Vinci to her left. Kelly Gibney with on the defensive end. Vinci, good move, and we have a whistle with 13.51 to go. It's going to go against Ridgewood. Oh, that's a great move by Vinci. Just that, getting that pivot, cutting right in, and getting that opportunity at goal. Vinci works it around. Weber. Marmo works it back out as the wind picks up. Mosalina, they work it around again. It's the pinwheel. Vinci. 
A little bit of miscommunication there as she was trying to go for Haley Bosalina. And the ball is scooped up by Bosalina. Fincy tries to thread the needle, backs out. Excellent defense by the Maroons. Darby Kieran in there again. Got that stick on the uh, pass attempt. Now here's Devin Maltz on the attack, working her way into IHA territory. Sebesco picks it up, 12 and a half to play, and IHA down by four. Sebesco, who's looking for the hat trick, works it back out to Darby Kiernan, and now Hannah Cermak. Cermak. Back to Tiernan. Looks like Semesco has it. Jorgensen, loose ball, and Kelly McBrady is gonna get there in time. And again, Ridgewood can be methodical here. McBrady on the attack, goes behind the net. Works her way around, shoots, and scores. No, no score. Somehow, Catherine Healy came up with the save. Tried to go high, and Healy got that big stick up, the big net up on it, and deflected. Didn't know where it was at first, but because nobody can go inside uh, the, the keeper's area there, she's just able to jump on the loose ball in her area. So now Healy's gonna take her time trying to get the ball to a teammate. IHA down by four, coming up on the 11 minute mark of the second half. And she finally makes a move, going to Katie Cromie, who tries to work her way out of traffic. And gives it back to Healy. Mistretta double teamed. Here's Zied. Too hard of a pass, but Kelly Johnson comes up with it. Bo Salina. Weber. Behind the cage. Zinn. Da Vinci. Vinci over the top. Looking to go to Bo Salina. Somehow the ball goes behind the net and is controlled by Ridgewood. That's a little too high for Bo Salina to control there. That was a great mounting, that was a great mounting of pressure there uh, for IHA. Just didn't get the payoff in the end. Katie Bork. Haven't mentioned her name that much here in the second half. Bork is heading to Dartmouth College this fall. Looking to play for the Big Green in the Ivy League. Here's Kiernan. Maltz. IHA with the pressure. That's Josie Zid, number 31. McBreedy. McBreedy, excuse me. On the charge, now backs out. Sebesco looking for the hat trick. 9-10 to play, second half. Sebesco, if she would have spun off to her left, she would have had Kelly Johnson in a bad situation, as is she just went forward like she is now. Good move by Sebesco. She spins, and she'll have to back it back out. Kiernan, and we have a whistle. See, this one's gonna go against Ridgewood, go ahead. That's the move that Semesco needed to make before, earlier on, she was coming back out. She had a wide open lane if she would have spun it around, didn't see that. The second time around, she spun right into pressure. IHA actually got called for the penalty. Kiernan to Semesco, loose ball. And Ford saves it from going out of bounds. Ford. Working your way back up top. High pass intended for Maltz. And brought out by Kiernan.
Cermak. Back to, to Kiernan. Now back to Cermak. Semesco. Semesco on the charge. And we have a whistle. Looks like it's going to go against IHA. And this may be the best opportunity for Katie Semesco to pull off the hat trick. Surprised they didn't give advantage there, but still Semesco uh, with a golden opportunity here. Whistle blows. Semesco fires, and it's deflected by Healy. Uh, Healy's made some key saves in this game here. Another one right there. Anna Jorgensen. Works right, almost double teamed. McBrearty on the attack, loose ball picked up by IHA. McBrearty goes to the ground and Katie Crowley brings it up for the Blue Eagles. Maggie Zeed on the attack. Zeed fires an off balance shot it's saved by Casey Cole. I think just stumbled a little bit trying to make one last move on the defender. Couldn't quite get her feet, uh, footing about uh, on her there. Shot attempt by Cermak, deflected by Healy, and Healy picks it up for IHA. And now Jen Mastretta racing over to save it from going out of bounds, and Ridgewood We'll keep it with under six and a half to play. Kelly McBreary challenging there, and now the goalie's out of position. Maltz with an open net. It's a goal for Devin Maltz. Her first of the game, and it's 10-5 Maroons. Kelly McBreary made the play over there, deflected the stick, which caused the ball to go out of bounds, and then quickly took that restart caught K uh, Catherine Healy out of position and was, they were able to get it back towards goal and fortunate bounce, yes, still get it in the net. Now it's a five goal game. A potential game changer right here with the goal by, by Maltz. A five goal game with 6.14 to play and if you're IHJ, you gotta think we gotta attack no matter what. Yeah. You have to. You have to now send all the numbers forward. You have to just find ways to create offense, even in a, a, a offensive half setting. You got to find ways just to generate something instead of going around the perimeter trying to pick your spots. The urgency now has to pick up if you're IHA. Gabriella Vinci controlled the ball on the faceoff for IHA, but now it's taken away by Baker Earl. And no, we're not saying her name incorrectly, folks. Maltz controls it for the Maroons. Kiernan. And now Ridgewood, they can afford to just stay out of top. IHA's got to put some pressure on here. You can't, you can't, don't want to sit back for too long with 535 to go. Baker up top. Ridgewood trying to take the time off the clock. Well, under five and a half to play. Baker. Spins. Works her way toward the net and we have a whistle. And it looks like this one will go against IHA. So Baker will look to make this a six goal game with five minutes to go. Baker fires and scores. Baker Earl with a third goal of the season and it's 11-5 Ridgewood with 4.52 to play. And Ridgewood now starting to pull away at you know 5-5. Five, five. They called that timeout just to regroup, say hey, you know, let's get back to the things that made us successful in that first half that got us the lead. And now you're seeing the pull away here. Ridgewood putting their stamp on the game now. F again, finding those gaps. You can't stress it enough. They're, they're, they're finding the, the openings in the IHA defense, exploiting them, and in some instances getting the fouls, which create those opportunities. And now Josie Zinn's going to take the face off for IHA. So a change 
in that sense as the ball is controlled by Jordan Ford of Ridgewood. She's taken pretty much every faceoff for the Maroons in this game. Trying to figure out the whistle here after the long explanation, and it looks like it'll be Ridgewood. Ridgewood with possession. McBreardy. Great defense by Tara Cassidy. And we have a whistle. This one's going to go against IHA. Of course, now the junior varsity players starting to make their move towards the field as they'll be on uh, to play their game after this. Four minutes to play here in the second half. Semesco still looking for the hat trick. Cermak on the attack. Cermak works at the Tiernan, fires a shot, and it's good. Make it four goals in the day for Darby Kiernan, and it's 12-5 Ridgewood as they have put this game away with 3.39 to play. Yeah, they, they've definitely put this game away. Just put the, just found the way you know, got in a little trouble there early in the second half, but now it, it imposed their will here and just found those spots. And now IHA starting to look a little tired after fighting back to get to 5-5 and then giving up the three goals in a row. Just start to see a little bit of the fatigue setting in on IHA and Ridgewood just getting the step here in the last five minutes or so. A pretty good crowd on hand. Looks like more fans have entered the facility here at IHA. Vincy takes the face off for IHA. Ford for Ridgewood and Ford comes up with the control. Cassidy collides with Ford and it should be Ridgewood ball. And it is and, and that's been the big thing. Ford has won so many face offs here this afternoon to get that Ridgewood attack going. And that's been a big key to this uh, this Ridgewood game thus far. Now it's got three minutes and change to go. Cermak biding her time as we approach the three minute mark of this game. IHA trailing by seven. Cermak on the attack, works her way around, fires a shot. I believe it was deflected and it's picked up by Baker Earl. As we have a whistle, I believe Earl is gonna get called for a foul at 2.45 to play. Yep. Indeed the case. Tried to pick it up, couldn't, and a little whack in the stick there. It got a little too high uh, for the referee's liking. So it's going to be IHA with the ball. Trying to come up with some way to get back in this game with time running out. IHA on the steal. Kiernan to McBreardy. McBreardy defended by Cromie. McBreardy trying to break away as they go behind the net to Semesco. Maltz. Two minutes to play, Ridgewood leads 12-5. Maltz on the attack. And makes it 13-5 with that goal with 1.56 to go. Nice shot, went top corner. Uh, Healy uh, did everything she could to get to it, but just couldn't get the, the stick on it. Excellent shot there by Maltz, her second of the game. And just uh, Ridgewood really just in the second half found their legs imposed their will you know pretty much after that timeout when IHA had tied it early in the second half and just pulled away from that point R Ridgewood really has been in control of the you know from the 18 minute mark on they've been in complete control of this match Vinci and Ford at midfield to take the face off and it's picked up by Ridgewood Kiernan to McBreardy 
McBrady working away from the outside, spinning away from a couple of Blue Eagles defenders. Down to 140 to go. And we have a whistle. This one's gonna go against IHA. The clock stops with a buck 40 to go. Under the two minute mark, a whistle will stop the clock. Cermak. At this point, IHA at least probably needs to foul in order to stop the clock. Is that a hat trick for Moltz? Yes, it is. Devin Moltz with a third goal of the game. It's 14 to five, Ridgewood. Another nice, that goal there, Maltz just sort of a little backhand shot there going away from her dominant side, found a, a, an area, found a gap to shoot it through, put the backhand on, throw some stuff at the net. You never know what's gonna happen. In that case, goes in 14-5 Maroons. So that goal definitely ices this game with a 119 to play. So following a 10 goal loss to West Morris, Ridgewood's gonna come up with what will appear to be at least a nine goal victory. IHA on the attack, Weber on the near side, working it back out to Vinci, a loose ball and just a bunch of players batting for it all over the place. And a whistle stops the clock with 55 seconds left. Baker Earl controls it and gets it to Hannah Cermak. Ridgewood fell to West Morris 20 to 10 on Monday. And are gonna come away with a big win here at Immaculate Heart Academy. And firing off another shot, that is Darby Kiernan. If my math stands correct, that would be her fifth goal of the game. It's 15 to five, Ridgewood. And, and now at 10 goals, the clock will just keep running uh, with the 10-goal lead here. That is Kiernan's fifth goal of the game. Again, finding the gaps in the defense and just Ridgewood uh, been pulling away for most of this second half here. So IHA, unfortunately, will drop to five and seven. And that will do it. Ridgewood High School defeats IHA, final score. Ridgewood 15, IHA five goals. And after a quick start to the second half, Brad, it looked like for a moment, IHA was gonna start pulling away after tying the game at five with 18-13 to play. But Ridgewood comes away with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. 11, oh. about 11 consecutive goals after IHA had tied up at five. If I, from five, five to 15, five, it just, it, you saw though, Carlin Nixon called that timeout right after the game got tied at five and pretty much had her just told it, settled the team down, told the team, Let, let's get back to what made us successful. And that finding the gaps in the IHA defense, pushing the play down low, you know, catching a defender off guard somewhere, you know, make a cut here, make a cut there. and. Once they got those openings and started converting or getting fouls off of them where they can convert off a restart, the end result was IHA having to play on their heels for the remainder of this game. And in the end, Ridgewood drops 10 consecutive to finish out a 15 to five victor. So Ridgewood again improves to eight and three overall. Next game for them Saturday, it's gonna be against Morristown, 11 a.m. So an early wake up call for the Maroons. Not sure if that game is gonna be at Morristown or at Ridgewood. For IHA, next up for them, they will host Morristown High School Saturday with uh, the game beginning at noon Eastern. Our next broadcast here on the NJ Varsity Broadcast Network is actually tomorrow evening as DePaul Catholic hosts Mary Hope of the Christians Academy in a girls lacrosse game. We will uh, start that game at 6 p.m. Eastern, pending, of course, our streaming capabilities. 
And uh, again, that will do it. Again, the final score here from IHA, Ridgewood 15, IHA 5. For Brett Luthner and our camera operator, Jay Treble, Matt Nelson signing off for now on the NJ Varsity Broadcast Network.